Welcome into the Alabama Football Report with the spring game, A-Day, just around the corner. We're going to take a look at some of the reported practice observations coming out of Alabama's 13th spring practice. Before we get to that, A, we will be live for A-Day. Make sure you are subscribed. The goal is to continue our upward trend, more subs each month. Let's get to 500. We're already at uh, 152, so a very promising start, you know, 10 days in, trending towards getting to that 300 number. Let's get to 500, though, and beyond. Hit that sub button for more free Alabama football YouTube videos. We begin with injury updates here. It is spring. Not everything is worth freaking out over. Latest here on Jaden Roberts. He was dressed but did not participate at practice during the media viewing. By the way, neither was Miles McVay. He was present, did not participate in the drills. He had been getting run as the number one right tackle for the Crimson Tide. So this was the offensive line, you know, one and twos uh, when healthy. We'll come back to, you know, Parker Brailsford obviously was in shorts and shirt going to the weight room, but still not fully practicing at this time. Elijah Pritchett, Tyler Booker, James Brockermeyer, and then Rock Montgomery and Wilkin Formby. You know, there's a real chance that when we get to week one of the regular season, one guy on this list is starting where he will be starting because you could have Caden Proctor back at left tackle. Booker stays at left guard. Brockermeyer is replaced by Brailsford. Uh, Jaden Roberts is at right guard. And Pritchett then plays on the right side of the offensive line. But having all that work early on in practice will benefit them, I think, in the event of injuries in the regular season. Unfortunately, another injury update here on Zay Mincy. He was seen walking off, hunched kind of over with trainers holding his shoulder pads and helmet. Not many details in terms of what actually happened, but that certainly is something we're going to have to monitor here because it leaves the Crimson Tide oh so thin in terms of cornerbacks and scholarship cornerbacks. It's Damani Jackson, Jaleel Hurley, and other freshmen, Saban Brown and Jalen Mbakwe. The defensive backfield really can't afford injuries. They don't have the depth. They've undergone massive change in the past, what, five months, four months, whatever it is. Massive personnel losses. Some additions, Damani Jackson, Keon Sab, two very impactful uh, you know, transfer portal players for this program. But you're going to try Devonta Smith at Husky. You're probably going to play Malachi Moore at safety. It's not something that's playing is going to be a full-time safety now, which I think is actually better for him and his skill set. But it's a thin group, and I think that is an area this team will strongly consider targeting when the portal reopens in just a few days. What do you think is the bigger spring transfer portal need for the Crimson Tide? OL for offensive line or DB for defensive back? It's the pinned comment today, so go vote if the ad comes here on YouTube. There's a real chance that some of those walk-ons that we don't ever really talk about because they're walk-ons in Alabama get A-Day reps, which, great for them. Uh, troubling depth for you. Maybe some of your other defensive backs get cornerback reps. You know, where's Dre Kirkpatrick? The, the maybe Nick Saban saw, I can't have a legacy player. I, I, I got I to gotta get out of here. I mean, that's why he really retired. Maybe he gets some run at corner. Maybe you try Devonta Smith, not just at, at Husky, but on the outside, and as opposed to that nickel corner role, which is what Husky is on the outside. Does sound like Malachi Moore is going to be playing safety. And I think that's fine. You know, I think Moore and Keon Sab, okay, you have stability in the back end and some guys that can play both deep and in the box as needed as well. But it still leaves, you know, hey, we're assuming Damani Jackson plays great. Like, we're assuming that he, he is everything that we hoped he could have been as a five-star recruit and he has a massive step forward and isn't just a... Ah, you know what? He's the five-star transfer. It ended up being a bust. That happens in college football. You need him and others to really impress or go find somebody else in the portal to help out your team sooner than later at the cornerback spot. Now, if you're worried about corner, I get it. You shouldn't have to worry, though, about buying tickets to your next big event. That could be Bama football, could be Bama baseball, could be Braves baseball, could be a concert, comedy, theater, whatever game time has you covered. They have deals on tickets up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. It is the place to find last-minute seats. 
They've got exclusive flash deals, sponsor deals, and even zone deals to help you save even more money on tickets. The all-in price feature shows your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. You can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. So download the GameTime app today over at GameTime.co and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase if you haven't already. That's code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, CHATSPORTS, for $20 off the link, GameTime.co, and the promo code, CHATSPORTS, will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Back to Malachi Moore here on playing safety, kind of full-time. It was a little weird. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was a little weird at first just from being that close to the line of scrimmage to being so far back from the line of scrimmage. But as spring practice kept going on, I got more comfortable with it. I'm very comfortable with it now. From a career snap count perspective, all per PFF, Malachi Moore did not play a lot of deep safety. So defensive line, that kind of overhang role where he's got a you know, coming off as like an outside linebacker, extra player lined up over a tackle or tight end, 128 snaps. In the box, so that box free box safety, kind of like the strong safety player, 290. Slot corner, 1,700 plus. Wide corner, mostly in man with motion, 34 snaps, only 127 reps at free safety. It is a change, but he can handle it. He's played all those spots. He can do deep safety as well. Played a plenty of practice too, after all. Justin Jefferson is getting some linebacker one reps, which I find very interesting. He was seen getting some starting reps alongside Deontay Lawson, who, of course, will be linebacker one for this team. I wonder if this is just testing out some rotations, you know, giving guys experience with other players because there's a lot of change going on, right? It's a new defensive coaching staff in place, and these players are all kind of getting a fresh look with these new coaches. No reports of, of Jihad Campbell being hurt. So probably just testing rotations, getting reps, and experimenting. You know, the key to college is experimentation, a good person or a good friend once told me. Also worth noting, yeah, Chris, Chris liked that one a little bit there. I saw the smirk behind the scenes. Uh, splitting some of those wolf reps, Juan Darius, Robinson, Keanu Coat, and Quay Russell. I would bet that this position, kind of, even just that kind of out the outside linebacker roles, right, Bandit and Wolf, I bet there's going to be a lot of rotation early on this season, trying to figure out who gives Bama the best advantage in games. This is a very intriguing position battle because linebacker in general, with some different modified roles from the previous Nick, Nick Saban regime, is different. And it's a deep group. And it's also an unproven group. The difference between linebacker one, you know, outside linebacker one, bandit wolf or whatever, and, you know, linebacker five, if we mix in some inside linebackers too, even it could be like seven or eight, there's not a bunch of gaps there. Keon Keeley, Alexander, Pierre, Robinson, Coat, Russell. That's six guys that I think could maybe play real snaps here. Maybe it's only five, but you're not going to play, you know, three of those guys at a time. It's, it's a fewer chances available to an extent with the way they use their, their personnel and how that the extra defensive end kind of stays as the defensive end. It isn't an extra edge in the same way it was for Dallas Turner, et cetera. Things, things, things have changed a little bit. Curious how it all ends up playing out. So pick a Wolf linebacker. 34 for Quandarius Robinson, 19 for Keanu Coat, and 49 for Quay Russell. Some tight end practice observations here. It's some changes going on here. Obviously, CJ Dupree was tight end one, but... Josh, I think it's pronounced Cuevas. I'm going to pronounce it that way because it sounds cool either way. Uh, the Washington transfer, who is a second-time transfer too, getting some reps over guys like Robbie Utes and Ty Lockwood and also Danny Lewis. It is both interesting but also like I get it because, like, you know, it's, hey, this is a guy that knows the offense pretty well. Cuevas is tight end too. He had a really impactful 2022 campaign for Cal Poly. 678 yards and then... Barely played actual pass-catching roll snaps for the Huskies. You know, 41 average. Yeah, one big play will, will inflate those numbers, won't it? But this is clearly somebody the staff likes. So I am excited to see what type of role he carves out, assuming Dupree remains tight end one. So pick a tight end two. JC, Josh Cuevas, RO for Robbie Utes. 
TL for Ty Lockwood, or DL for Danny Lewis. 